Crime. I come here this evening on behalf of the students at Gillespie and the community in which Gillespie sits. I agree with one thing so far that's been said here today, and that is that the community and the students deserve the best education that they can possibly be rendered by the Board of Education. I am left with a feeling after hearing this wonderful presentation that we knew the answers to what makes a successful school, and yet we didn't do what was necessary to make Gillespie a successful school. I hear people saying, and I, I heard the last speaker refer to the, the supports that they gave Gillespie, uh, indicating that these supports, we gave them these supports, and, and the inference would thus be that that didn't work. And the supports that I heard were requiring the principal to do some more monthly reports, um, re providing additional oversight on the budget, and doing immediate instructional feedback, and I didn't hear anybody say that we gave them an additional, some tutors. I didn't hear anybody say that we put some more disciplinary, and some disciplinary issues are a big part of the, the um, metric that I'm glad that I got today so that I can really have a chance to look at, and see how we stand up and compare to that metric. I didn't hear anyone say that we put some intensive social and emotional needs kind of programs in there because that's what you're touting that this new school will do. Why didn't you do it for these children that have been at Gillespie for the last three years? Those are the kind of frustrations that I have. Why is it that if we knew these answers, and obviously AUSL has the magic because you want to turn the school over to them, why didn't you take the magic that you found that they used at, at Harvard and Dulles and all of those other schools and implement them at Gillespie because our mandate as a community, our mandate as the, the municipal agency responsible for educating these children is that we do just that, not that we outsource education. So I'm just real concerned that, that we are taking the easy way out. We are outsourcing education at every opportunity that we get, either to charters, either to uh, reconstituted and now we're doing the you know the AUSL thing and we're never ever ever addressing the issue of how do we provide this wonderful education opportunity to every child that, that is within our province to educate. So that's my first set of concerns. My second set of concerns is that you created policy and you implement the policy and you announce the policy and say this is the policy, this is the rubric, these are the rules and regulations you have to live under and you have to meet these standards and then you say, oh, by the way, we're going to go back two years, when you didn't know what it was. <laughs> it seems to be to be a little inconsistent. And I am not advocating for a moment that we would say, you get another two years to destroy these students' lives. That's not what I'm advocating. Because we want them to, we want them to be up to speed and excel as quickly as possible. But I'm saying that if all of these PhDs in this building <laughs> don't have the answer that they can go out there because that's what they get paid for. <laughs> they should be out there at Gillespie tomorrow morning implementing it. Instead of saying, well, we're going to give you the rest of this year to fail and then we're going to start over again in September. If the school is in that dire situation, all of these PhDs sitting down here where St. John should be at the school tomorrow. Turning some of that education into some real functional useful usefulness to these children. I'm here advocating for these students. I am here saying that you cannot possibly convince me that there is not one good teacher in that building. I haven't, don't even know the names of most of the teachers, and I've been in the building. And actually, I hear that many of the people who are making the decisions about whether these schools should be closed have never been in the building. Which to me, this seems to be a little little disingenuous, to say the least. But I know that if given the right support, Gillespie could be Leonard Gifted. If given the right support, and if our students who come into the school many times not ready to learn, if they have the same social and economic 
bases that some of these other schools have, they could be able to market it. They don't. We know that. We have to take them where we find them. We have to bring them to where they need to be. But that requires more than a monthly data-driven action plan. And I don't think that we do that. And I think then we condemn the schools. We come in here and these, put all of these horrendous statistics on this board. And you start off by saying, we're not saying the students fail. And then you go through 25 minutes of, yes, they fail, in front of them. The, pro the process is illogical. The process is probably not well thought out. I mean, maybe well thought out. You can't spend millions of dollars studying this process. Uh, I don't know. But I know that some of the money studying all of these different processes should be put into these schools and then we can have better outcomes for our students. And that's what's not happening down here. So I stand here with my students, with my teachers, with my, you know, this school is in my community and I care about what happens to these young people. And clearly I'm glad that you're not talking about closing it down because then we'd really be mad. Yeah. <laughs> and I would have a whole room full of people from my community here saying, no, you're not closing anything in our war. <laughs> we are here because they're going to present a plan and based on that plan they're going to show you why you've made, why your assessment that this is a school that's right for turnaround is incorrect and should be re -fought. Thank you, Mr. Hearing Officer. And if I have anything, after I read the metric, if I see anything I think you need to know, I will get it to you tomorrow at 4.49. Okay, I'll open it up. Just one thing I want to point out to you, although I've, I made it clear. I don't work for the board. I'm not here to answer questions. I don't think that reconstitution requires that every teacher, I think they can all reapply. No? Yeah, and the new yeah, entity they, has they can hire as much as 15%. And I've had this discussion earlier today. Yes, I hear all the people behind me shaking their heads no, but I think the answer right. is yes. When they started, they didn't hire, they didn't believe that. But now they've been changing the policy and they realize that actually some of the teachers that were in the building before they came in had some sense, so they hired some of them. Okay. So that is a possibility. Okay. I just wanted to make it clear, and the fact that they were all shaking their heads no behind you means that I'm glad I stated that because they should know that. I mean, I, I, I think I've said... Some of them, yes, some of them probably, okay. maybe, I don't know. Right. Thank you so all. Thank you very much for allowing me to vent. <laughs> um, the principal, Dr. Willis.